Welcome back guys, this is Molten. Today I've picked out a closest selling game from the currently ongoing Isle of Man International event for you, which I believe highlights the concept of using your pawns to shut your opponent's bishop out very very well. So let's take a look. Here the game started 1e4, c5 to the ceiling defense, and Luke McShane chose to play the closest Helian, a favorite of his, where he fiancados the bishop on the king side. Black follows suit, and here black chooses to play the move pawn to e6, a setup which I would definitely recommend for black and one I play myself, since it's fairly easy um, to execute and the plan and of development for black is fairly simple and straightforward to follow. One I would definitely recommend um, you look into if you don't already have a system to play with the black pieces. Here white follows with bishop to e3, attacking the pawn on c5, and the way I like to defend it is simply to play the move pawn to d6. And it's also the most popular move here. Play might continue queen d2. We develop with knight g7. And for example, let's say white plays f4, castles, knight f3. And whenever white is threatening to play d4 here, we can simply chuck the knight into the d4 square. And for example, castles, we can follow up with looking to perhaps advance our queenside pawns. A typical plan for black is to follow with moves such as rook b8 and b5 at the right moment. He also has the typical breaks in the center on the king side with moves such as e5 and f5 which he definitely should consider as well. Instead here on move 6 black chose to play the move knight to d4 which is also perfectly fine. Queen d2 but here instead of um, developing his king side, black chose to play the move queen to a5, um, a less popular move in this position, and one where I believe white is scoring fairly well um, after queen a5. The idea is to put pressure on the c3 knight and also to stop white from playing his natural developing move knight to e2, which will be met by knight takes e2, and white has the choice between knight takes e2 or queen takes e2 but both weaken the b2 and also c3 points. Therefore instead white chooses to play the move knight to h3 moving the knight temporarily to the side of the board but the knight often goes here in close Sicilian positions uh, since um, it will often drop back to the f2 square after white plays the move pawn to f4. There's also a favorite move of world champion Magnus Carlsen whenever he reaches this similar close Sicilian structures with the white pieces. Black continued pawn to d6, white castled, knight e7, f4, black castled. And now we can see the downside of putting our queen on a5. It runs into a few tactical shots from white and this is a very common idea which comes from the dragon actually and that's the idea to play knight to d5. Attacking the queen on a5 and also attacking the piece or the square on e7 since black can't take because white has this in-between check and next move white will capture the queen winning a piece therefore black has the choice between defending his queen or dropping the queen back to d8 to defend his knight if it drops back simply white is looking to take and possibly play c3 followed by d4 next move with a very strong pawn center and attacking chances on the king side later on Therefore instead black chose to play knight to c6, hoping that the queen trade will relieve some of the pressure. However, white chooses to go for the queenless middle game, since he takes the bishop pair and goes for a very sensible and healthy advantage with the move knight to e7 check. The king's forced to go to h8, and here McShane plays very very simple chess, maintaining his advantage. Simply chops the bishop on c8, allows the trade of queens, plays the move c3, forcing the knight to b5 square, and keeps the bishop pair, um, no structural weaknesses since none of the pawns have been traded off, and white just has a very, very comfortable edge, especially after the move f5 here. Here if black considers taking on f5, we simply take back, and we can see that the bishop on g2 really comes alive, and the power of the two bishops will be felt a lot more with the position being open. Therefore, black chooses to play a different move which stops 
the nasty threat of pawn to f6 trapping the bishop on g7, he chooses to play the move king to g8 instead. And here white plays a positional idea which is the whole point of me showing you this video in the first place and that's the move pawn to f6 temporarily trapping the bishop on the h8 square and you should always remember this move in similar positions whenever the bishop can't retreat to f8 you should remember that in these positions you don't always have to go for a kingside attack but you can also play it very positionally if you get a pawn to f3 or f6 and shut out your opponent's piece that's the same as being a piece up here we need to support our f6 pawn. If we can get our pawn to h4 and g5, we simply shut this bishop and h8 out for the rest of the game and we'll be a clear piece up. So McShane chooses to go for the move pawn to g4. Very natural decision. Black goes knight to e5, attacking the pawn on d3 and pawn on g4. And we definitely shouldn't worry about sacking the pawn on d3 since, like I said before, you should view it as you're simply a piece up in this position as long as you can keep that bishop hemmed in on h8. Therefore McShane plays g5. Knight takes d3 was played. And when you're material up, what do you do? You trade pieces of course, so that's simply what McShane does in this position. Knight to f2. Here black can't take on b2 since white will follow up with rook to b1, pinning the knights on the b-file. Therefore black takes, we take back with the rook. Rook d8 was played. And here the plan for white is relatively simple. We simply just put pressure on the d6 pawn by doubling on the d file. And also we really just have to be careful of one idea where black is looking to give up a piece for perhaps two pawns. And then black might have some play since he has three pawns for the sacrificed piece. So white starts out with bishop to f4. Black plays knight c7. Rook d1, e5, bishop to e3, knight to e8. So this is the idea I was talking about a few moves earlier. And here we have to be careful that black doesn't play a move such as knight takes f6, pawn takes f6, bishop takes f6, and manages to get two pawns for the piece, because then with his extra pawn he won earlier, he would have three pawns and enough material for compensation. But with our rook on f2, this shouldn't be a problem. Here we continue to improve our pieces. Here our bishop on g2 isn't doing anything, so we reroute it to the c4 square instead to pressure f7. Black plays h6, and of course we should keep our pawn chain intact and play the move pawn to h4. Black plays h5. White continues bishop to c4. Black plays king to f8. But we can see here that black has no real plan to continue um, his position and the onus is really on white to find a breakthrough. We continue rook to d2. Here black can't sacrifice the piece since um, he's going to run into a move such as rook f2 or rook f1 pressuring the f7 point afterwards. Therefore black goes rook c7, king g2, a6, and here we have all the time in the world, so we slowly just improve our position and stop our opponent's counterplay with the move pawn to a4. Rook c6 was played. And here white simply plays pawn to a5, shutting out all black's counterplay. Black plays rook to b8. White plays a waiting move, king to h3. If black does nothing, eventually we will look to play the move pawn to b4 ourselves. But black pushes with b5. We can on on. Black takes back, and here we have the move pawn to b4, utilizing the pin with the bishop on e3. Black decides to take it, but here simply we can take the rook with a winning position. After rook takes, we simply take back, and with the bishop stuck in h8, white is simply too much material up in this position. And here black plays his last hope, which is bishop takes f6. Hoping for pawn takes, knight takes f6, and and reaching some sort of unclear endgame where he has four pawns for the rook. Instead white wants none of that and simply plays the move rook to f2. If the bishop moves then white will simply take an f7 with a completely winning position. So black tries king to e7, but white simply doubles on the f1 square, threatening pawn takes f6 next move with a clear rook up. I hope you found this positional idea useful to implement in your own games. Thank you for watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one.